Hello everyone, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to show you how to decorate graduation caps. So we get a ton of requests for this project every spring. Everyone is looking for unique ways to decorate their graduation caps so they stand out in the crowd. And I can't blame you. If I had thought of this when I was graduating, I would have done the same thing. So we hear things about how you want to add a name or a fun saying or your graduation year, of course. Other questions I get are what's the best material to use? Should you use regular vinyl or iron on vinyl? Is there a way to add lights or all of the above? Well, you are in the right place because I am right there with you this year. Our daughter Alexa is graduating from high school this year and we got our assignment. We accepted the challenge and I think you'll give us an A for effort when you see all of the fun designs that we've come up with, including a fun way to display your keepsake cap when the big day is over. So come with me to the craft table and we will get to work. So let's start with what we need for this project. First, we need a graduation cap, also known as a motorboard. You can use your own. Uh, we don't have Alexis here, hers is purple though. Or you can get one, um, you can just buy them actually, and I have them included in my materials list below this video. We'll also need all the fun stuff to add to our graduation caps. You can use a variety of cardstock, including heavy cardstock, glitter cardstock, and even foil cardstock, and you can mix and match these to suit your style. You could also use vinyl, like I have right over here. I'm going to show you how to use permanent vinyl and shimmer vinyl, and two types of transfer tape, both regular and a strong grip. You might be wondering, what about iron-on vinyl? I will share what I found out about that later in this video, so stay tuned for that. And you can go even further than just paper and vinyl. I'm gonna show you how to use this plastic folder, yes, a plastic school folder, and some fairy lights like these to make a truly one-of-a-kind glow-up grad cap. Isn't this just so cool? So to make these things, we're going to need some glue dots and glue sticks to add the creations to our caps. You'll also need a way to cut out your designs you can just use a craft knife, but a Cricut cutting machine is faster and will bring your design to life. And don't forget the machine mats if you use a Cricut. Finally, a variety of tools like these will help put it all together. Now to get you started, I've designed three different graduation cap designs that are sure to land you at the head of the class. So let me show you where to get my graduation cap design files and how to use them to bring your graduation cap to life. Step one, get my free graduation cap design files. I am happy to share my designs free with you to give you a head start on this project. To get them, go to jennifermaker.com 382 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the design by searching the page for design number 382 and then click it to download a zip file with an SVG for cutting on a Cricut or another cutting machine, a DXF file, and a printable PDF for cutting by hand. If you need to cut these by hand, do so now. If you're using a Cricut cutting machine, let me show you how that works. When you view the SVG folder, you'll see three designs, a layered rose, a sports theme, and shooting stars. Choose the design that you want to create, and then upload the appropriate SVG file to Cricut Design Space and add it to your canvas. If you're unsure how to do this, go to jennifermaker.com svgs to learn how to unzip and upload files. Here's what each design looks like in Design Space. I included the year 2022 in all of these designs, but you can put in a different year. It's easy to change. Just locate and hide the year layer in the layers panel on the right. Click text over on the left. Type in a new year. I'm using a font called Wished here. And then resize it to fit. And you can color it, change the alignment, and change the line space as necessary. And that's all there is to it. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make the STARS graduation cap design. But we'll also go over some tips to make the other two graduation cap designs as well toward the end. And all the tips I give you will help you with pretty much any kind of graduation cap design, so be sure to stick around for that. Step 2. Prepare your graduation cap design file. 
you may need to zoom out to see the whole design on your canvas. To do this, click on the minus sign on the lower left corner of your canvas. The star's design is set up to make one graduation cap topper. The diamond shape measures just over 13 inches from the left corner to the right corner, but I'll show you how to fit and cut this on the standard 12 by 12 inch machine mats. If you look over in the layers panel on the right, you'll see a yellow warning sign. If you click that icon, you'll get a pop-up that says the image is too large for the Cricut machine. But we can fix that. All you need to do is make sure that the whole design is still selected on your canvas. If it's not, click Select All in the top menu. Then just over on the right, you will see the Rotate feature. Double click in the box and type 45. This will rotate the diamond shape 45 degrees and change it to a square. By doing this, it also changes the overall dimensions of the shape so it will now fit on a 12 by 12 inch machine mat. If you look back over in the layers panel, you'll see that the warning sign is now gone. Super easy, right? So this size should work for most graduation caps. If your cap is larger or smaller, you will need to adjust the size of the project. To do this, make sure all of the layers are selected, that way everything changes size together. Now enter the specific dimensions of your cap in the top menu under size. Make sure to keep the lock closed to maintain proportions. You can also click and drag the resize handle on the corner of the bounding box to adjust the size. The hole in the middle of the design is for the tassel and the button that holds the tassel. While measuring my caps for this project, I noticed that some buttons are not centered. Can you believe that? So if your cap button isn't centered, don't worry, I have a fix for that too. If you're using one of the graduation caps in my materials list, here's what you do. First, remove the tassel. Next, use a pair of scissors to remove the button just like this. The button is glued on and should be super easy to remove. Don't worry if you accidentally nick the fabric because we'll be covering that up with our design so no one is even gonna see that. We glue the button back on later and add the tassel. That way it will be right in the center where it belongs. If your tassel button can't be removed and is still off center, I can help with that too. Check out the blog post that goes along with this video at jennifermaker.com slash graduation cap ideas. It includes step-by-step -step instructions on how to create a template and design space that will work with almost all graduation caps. Step three, prepare your plastic folder. Now before cutting, you also need to prepare your yellow folder so it will fit on your machine mat. Open up the folder and use sharp scissors to cut along the center crease until the two sides are separate. Cut away any extra pockets or pieces to create a flat piece of plastic that will fit on your machine mat. Step four, cut out your graduation cap pieces. Now we're ready to cut. Make sure you have the right machine selected in Design Space and click Make It. And if you're prompted, click On Mat and Continue. You should see five mats on the Prepare screen. Click Continue in the bottom right. Now we'll choose our material settings. We're using cardstock, plastic, and vinyl for this graduation cap, so we need to make sure to select the correct material for each mat according to mat order. I'm using heavy cardstock for the first mat. If it's not in your favorites list, click Browse All Materials and use the search window to search heavy cardstock. Now before you click Done, here's a handy time-saving tip. If you have a material that you use a lot on your Cricut, such as heavy cardstock, for example, you can easily add it to your favorites list to save time. This will work for any material. To do this in Cricut Design Space, select the material in the All Materials pop-up menu, then click on the star outline to the far right of that material. If it's a solid star, it's already in your favorites. And if you don't see that there, it's good to add. You can add or delete any materials from your favorites by following these simple instructions. Once you have your material selected, click Done. Place your cardstock on your machine mat and use a brayer to make sure it's fully adhered. 
check that your fine point blade is clean and in clamp B, and then load the mat into your machine and press the flashing button to begin cutting. When the cut is finished, unload the mat by flipping it over and rolling it back to release the cardstock. This helps prevent the cardstock from curling and ripping. And if you run into any issues cutting your materials, check out my tips and tricks for cleaner cuts at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Blades. Now to cut the plastic folder that's on mat two, I use the acetate setting with more pressure. So add the plastic folder to your machine mat. Again, use the brayer to make sure it's really well adhered. I used a purple strong grip mat here. If you don't have a strong grip mat, that's okay. You can use a green standard grip mat so long as it's clean and sticky and you use that brayer first. Then add some painter's tape to all four sides to keep the plastic in place. Once the cut is finished and before unloading your mat, check to make sure that your cut went all the way through the plastic. Just lift up a corner and see if it went all the way through. If it didn't, press the flashing button again to make the cut a second time in the exact same spot. You can repeat this process as many times as necessary. And once it's all ready, unload that mat, remove the tape if you used any, flip it over and release the plastic. And mats three, four, and five cut really well with the premium vinyl permanent glossy setting using more pressure. Step five, assemble your graduation cap. While the cardstock and plastic are ready to assemble immediately after cutting, you'll need to weed the vinyl layers. Use a weeding tool to remove the excess vinyl. Remember to remove the small parts inside the letters too. Once your vinyl material is weeded, cut pieces of standard grip transfer tape to the same sizes as your text areas. Remove the backer from the transfer tape and apply the transfer tape to your vinyl decal by holding the transfer tape in the shape of a taco or a U-shape and then put the bottom of your taco onto the middle of your design. Smooth the transfer tape over the decal from the center outward using a scraper tool to burnish both sides. Doing it this way will eliminate a lot of creases and bubbles. And once you've done that for each of the three pieces of text, you are ready to assemble your graduation cap. Here's a look at all of the pieces that make up the STARS graduation cap design. To begin assembly, start with the black cardstock diamond shape. Rotate the cardstock so that it is face up and angle the way it will look when it will be finally placed on the graduation cap. It may help to look back at the design space canvas to see where each element goes. Now we will apply the vinyl text to the cardstock. This can be tricky, but I have a great tip to help with this too. First, carefully peel the carrier sheet off the back of each piece of vinyl. The vinyl should remain adhered to the transfer tape. If little bits of it don't want to transfer to your tape, scrape it again and pay careful attention to those problem areas. Now it's time to add your vinyl text to the cardstock. I started with the future is and gently laid it in place, being mindful that it was straight. So here's a tip on how to apply vinyl to cardstock. Now normally when you're putting vinyl onto something, you would burnish all over your transfer tape to ensure the vinyl is well adhered to your surface right? But a different approach really works better with cardstock. After gently laying the design on the cardstock in the proper location, use your fingertip or another small blunt item like that to press over only the vinyl areas under the transfer tape. Slowly and carefully peel away the transfer tape so that it doesn't damage the cardstock underneath. If the cardstock lifts, try to smooth the fibers back down. If the tape pulls up a lot of the cardstock, you can cut the black layer again and repeat with gentler burnishing. Then repeat that for each vinyl decal. All of your vinyl text areas should be applied before moving on.
Now flip the cardstock over so that it is facing down. Apply thin lines of craft glue around all of the cutout shapes. Then fill in the larger areas with additional thin glue lines. Place the yellow plastic shape on the black shape, making sure all cutout areas are covered and the center buttonholes line up. Since the yellow layer is smaller, you'll see a border of black around the folder piece. Allow the glue to set for a moment before continuing. In the finished cap, we want the lights to shine through the yellow plastic in the shapes created by the black cardstock. So we'll add the string lights to the underside of the yellow plastic, sticking wire sections in place with the 3D adhesive dots. Concentrate the lights under the cutouts for the best shine. I started with the light furthest from the battery pack and placed it in the big star, opposite from where I'll hide the pack. Place a 3D adhesive dot on the yellow plastic outside the star cutout, but near where you want the light to sit. Hold the light where you would like it to shine and run the wire from the light to the adhesive dot. Press the wire into the adhesive dot, move to the next light and repeat the process until you have filled the cutout areas with lights. In some areas, you may be able to use the same adhesive dots for more than one light's wire section. When you're done applying the lights, you should have a small amount of wire that leads to the battery pack near the bottom of the cap. Now you can place 3D adhesive dots on all four corners of the back of the cardstock where it extends past the yellow plastic. Flip the layers over and apply the assembled cap piece to the graduation cap. Make sure the four corners line up. The wire and battery pack should be sticking out toward the bottom between the plastic and the graduation cap. Flip the graduation cap over, place a 3D adhesive dot on the battery pack and adhere it to the underside of the graduation cap where it will be hidden behind the head. And finally, let's add the tassel and button back to the cap. With the tassel in place, add glue to the bottom of the button and place it in the center hole. Make sure to hold it firmly in place until it's dry. This time could vary depending on the type of glue that you're using. And there you go. All that's left to do is to flip on the fairy lights and show the world your bright DIY. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I have a couple of notes to help you cut and assemble the other two designs as well. The rose graduation cap has some intricate cuts that may make removal from your mats difficult. Remember to turn the mat over and roll the mat away from the cardstock. If the intricate pieces do not want to come away easily from the mat, try gently sliding a spatula under them. To stack the layers of cardstock for the flower bouquet, I started with the bottom layer and worked my way up to the top, starting with the green layer and ending with the silver layer. I laid the silver foil over the red foil for the text and the graduation year. Craft glue also works well to apply the assembled cardstock to the graduation cap, but keep in mind that this is more permanent. If you want or need a temporary application, you can make a topper from the STARS SVG file to apply the assembly to, and then use adhesive dots to apply the topper to the cap. This is also an excellent way to create a topper that can later be placed inside a shadow box for display. And the sports graduation cap is made completely from vinyl. The file is designed so that the corner elements on each side of the cap are cut together as one piece. This may seem like a waste of material, but it will save tons of time when assembling it. Apply this set of lines to the cap first, and then use them to align elements with the left and right corners of the cap. 
Every cap is a little different in shape and size, so don't worry if things are a little off. It makes it unique, right? The jersey layers stack red, white, and black. If you want to add a little shine, I also made a version with silver shimmer vinyl in place of the white, and I love the result. If you use shimmer vinyl, I recommend strong grip transfer tape. For more tips on layering vinyl, check out my tutorial at jennifermaker.com slash how to layer vinyl on a Cricut. So what do you think? Didn't these turn out so awesome? There are so many ways to customize these graduation cap ideas. You can change the vinyl to your school colors, add your favorite quote in a fun font, or even just glue some rolled flowers to a graduation cap topper. I have some perfect flower designs in my paper flower letter tutorial, which you can find at jennifermaker.com slash paper flower letter. Now, once you have your graduation cap assembled, you can wear it proudly to stand out in the crowd. It's going to look so great. And once the big day is over, you can proudly display your creation as a keepsake in a cool shadow box like this. And depending on the shadow box size, you can add, um, even add some other mementos from your special day around it. Wouldn't this be awesome? I hope you'll use these ideas as inspiration to create your own design too. Oh, and one last thing, some crafters might wonder if you could use iron on vinyl instead of regular permanent vinyl since the graduation cap is made out of fabric, right? So my team and I tested it, of course, and we found that permanent adhesive vinyl is a much better option. The heat required to adhere the iron on vinyl to the cap can warp it and even melt the cap and its fabric. <laughs> so I recommend staying away from iron on vinyl for this project. Now, if you have any questions about these graduation caps, the materials, or the techniques that I went over in this video, or anything else craft related that I might be able to help you with, let me know. I would love to help. Leave your question below this video or ask us over in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. I would love to see you make these. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.